Welcome back for part two of my lower fairing installation and transformation. So in part one, I removed my chopped engine guard and replaced it with the standard engine guard sent over by Hogworks. I also showed you a mistake I had made with the positioning of that engine guard, but that has since been rectified and we are ready to get this lower fairing installed. So let's go. And here are the Hogworks lower fairings, color matched and painted in the billiard teal color to match my bike. And let me just say, the paint finish on this is beautiful. It's shiny, it's smooth, it's clean, everything. In the box, Hogworks provided me with everything I needed to get this installed, including the hardware pieces, the nuts, the bolts, the washers, and of course, the instructions. So this is the rider facing side of the lower fairings and the first thing I had to do was I removed that top bolt inside the glove compartment. Doing this step, remove the front clamshell piece from the front of the fairing. Once that bolt and top fairing piece were removed, I was able to insert my U-clamp into the two holes in the center. With that done, I was able to slide my lower fairing into place and position it correctly to get those bolts on. Using one hand to keep the fairing in place, I used my other hand to put on the other side of the U-clamp and bolt that down. Hand tightened. From there, I took the bottom mount and put that on the lower bar of the engine guard. Hogworks makes it clear that the flat side of this bottom mount piece should be facing upward, so it should be on top. So now that the hardware is in place, I can go ahead and bolt this thing down. So I put the bolt up through the bottom of the fairing through the bottom mount piece and then put a washer and a nut on the other side. Using a ratchet and a screwdriver, I was able to go ahead and get this thing wrenched in place. And just for the full picture, here's that same exact process just from the bottom view. Now remember, the top bolts were only hand tightened, so I did have to go back and tighten those down, and I alternated the tightening on each bolt. Now you're about to see that front clamshell piece that I took off at the beginning, and now I'm just putting it back on. And this, all I had to do was just snap it in place. So with that, this is now just a reverse process. So that top bolt that I took off at the beginning, I'm putting that bolt back in. So that was fun. But now let's get to the really fun part, which is all about the lights. So Hogworks also sent over these LED light inserts for the lower fairings. And one thing that I didn't know about these is that they actually come with a lifetime warranty. So if I ever have any issues with these, I can just contact Hogworks and they will get me squared away. So first things first, I removed the back panel from the back of the lower fairings. There are three tabs on each side of the panel. So all I had to do was lift up one of the tabs and it kind of just popped out. So this was truly a plug and play process. So first I weaved the wire through that hole that you see me wiring it through now. And from there, those three tabs that were holding that first panel in place are the same three tabs that hold the light in. So all I had to do was put it in the same position and then snap it in place. Mm -hmm. 
From there, it was just a matter of securing the wires and routing them in a way that would get them to the front fairings. I secured my wire to the frame using zip ties, making sure that I left enough slack in my wire to not cause any issues down the road. So I did have to take the fairing off to get this install completed and here again you just see me routing the wires up through the bike to get to the front fairing. Hogworks did provide me with clips to put on the frame to secure those wires in place and I did utilize them. Just didn't show them on the video. <laughs> And this is where the plug and play comes in. So this is the wiring harness that came with the lights. And all I did was just connect, 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 and done. The install is done. When I tell y'all top tier install, it was so easy, super easy install. The lights are beautiful. They're nice and bright. Of course, I can't wait to get this thing on the road and really test it out. But I am making an executive decision on this part. I'm not putting this back on. This is the first piece that I took off with the 532nd Allen. I just feel like it defeats the purpose of a vented light. You know, because if I put this on, it's gonna block that airflow. And um, I really want to feel that air coming through, especially with how hot it's been lately. So if I run into any issues down the road, I'll put it back on. But I don't think this is going to give me any issues leaving it off. The lights themselves are held onto the fairing by tabs. And these two bolts don't affect the light. So we're going to rock with it, see what it does. But Hogwarts lower fairing LED kit. I love it. Can't wait to put it to the test and get these miles but thank you guys for watching and as always thank you for rocking with me thank you for rolling with me and until next time for the next ride bye y'all